in this lecture let us discuss about metrics for the design model first of all what is meant by metric so this metric it mainly focus on evaluating various aspects of the design process and the resulting model and why it is important for us so because it helps in evaluating the quality effectiveness and maintainability of the software design and these metrics they help us as various aspects of the design including structure complexity and adherence to design principles so these metrics they allow the developers or software engineers to evaluate or estimate the design quality and also include various architecture and component level designs architectural design metrics these metrics they mainly focus on the characteristics of the program architecture with an emphasis on architectural structure and effectiveness of modules or components within the architecture class and card propose set of complexity measures to better understand and manage software complexity particularly in object oriented systems these measures can be categorized into three main types that is structural complexity data complexity and system complexity so what is meant by the structural complexity it mainly focus on organization and relationship within the code particularly regarding classes and their interactions how the classes are interacting with each other and it can be defined by using this uh, notation s of k equal to f out square k this fan out it represents number of components or classes that a particular component or class interacts with or communicates with directly and in the context of software design it often describes how many other classes a specific class depend on second one is data complexity it mainly evaluates the complexity arising from the data structures and attributes used in the system so we can consider this as a complexity within the interface of the internal module and uh, it can be defined by using this notation so here the total var is nothing but the total number of input and output variables uh, which are coming out and going to the module and third one is system complexity system complexity looks at the overall complexity of the software system as a whole taking into account both structural and data complexities together so we can say that it's a combination of both structural and data complexity and uh, the notation which we use for representing system complexity is like this so you need to combine both the uh, structural complexity and data complexity then coming to the metrics for object oriented design they mainly provide valuable insights into the quality and maintainability of software systems and uh, here we use this metric size which is usually defined using this four views uh, in terms of four views population volume length and functionality population is measured by taking static count of object oriented entities like uh, classes or operations volume means volume measures are identical to population measures but are collected dynamically and length is a measure of chain of interconnected design elements that is nothing but the depth of an inheritance tree is considered as a measure of length and functionality metrics provide an indirect indication of values delivered to the customer by an object oriented application and we have uh, some of the size metrics like lines of code which measures the total number of lines in a class or module and uh, number of classes can be considered like uh, counting total number of classes in a system it provides a designs breadth and potential modularity or else number of methods can also be taken as a metric for size which indicates total number of methods within a class and second one is complexity which measures the number of independent parts through a method or class indicating its complexity so if uh, higher the value Uh, it suggests more complex code that may be harder to test and maintain so it can be examined by examining how class of object oriented design they are interrelated to each other which is nothing but cyclomatic complexity or else you can take weighted methods per class also which counts number of methods in a class weighted by their complexity and uh, the third one is coupling the physical connections between elements of object oriented design it represents coupling within the object oriented system and say if the coupling is low then it indicates better modularity and reduced interdependencies next is sufficiency metric 
it evaluates whether a class has enough methods to fulfill its responsibilities and classes with too few methods may not encapsulate functionality effectively completeness this metric assesses whether a class or module implements all required features as specified in requirements incomplete implementations can lead to functionality gaps next is the uh, cohesion so this cohesion it measures how related the methods of a class are say if the value is low it indicates higher cohesion which is desirable as it suggests that methods are closely aligned with the class responsibilities so that uh, the metric uh, is nothing but uh, lack of cohesion in methods which is also represented as lcom and cohesion among the classes uh, it helps in evaluating how well the classes within a package or module work together then we have similarity this metric assesses how similar classes are based on attributes and uh, methods high similarity may indicate opportunities for code reuse or refactoring into a base class then volatility it measures how changes in one class affects the other lower change propagation indicates a stable design whereas higher values can indicate a fragile design and it even tracks the frequency and types of changes made to classes over time say if there is higher volatility it indicate areas that may require stabilization or refactoring then class oriented metrics which are used in software engineering to assess the quality and complexity of the object oriented software systems here we have few metrics like uh, weighted methods per class this metric counts the number of methods in a class giving weight to each method based on its complexity say if you take uh, cyclometric complexity and it calculates some of the complexities of the methods which are represented within a class then it provides the overall complexity based on size and complexity of the methods then second one is the depth of the inheritance tree this metric measures length of the inheritance path from class to root class in the inheritance hierarchy so uh, then why it is important means a deeper inheritance tree can indicate greater potential for code reuse but may also increase complexity in the likelihood of the inherited issues a depth of inheritance tree it can indicate increased complexity as uh, changes to the base class can impact multiple levels of the derived classes in the hierarchy next the third one is number of children this metric counts number of immediate subclasses derived from a class a higher number of children can indicate class that is more likely to be reused and suggest good design but it can also mean the class is more complex due to its responsibilities so from this figure you can just uh, uh, take this c2 class c2 and you can see that this class c2 has three subclasses that is c21 c22 and c23 and the fourth one is coupling between this object classes Uh, which is again a metric uh, which measures the number of other classes that a class is coupled with coupling refers to the degree of dependence between the classes so it uh, suggests strong dependencies so which increase the complexity as well as reduce the flexibility of the product say if one class is strongly dependent on the other class and if there are more such uh, dependent classes then it results in increasing complexity and reducing flexibility of the product response for a class is a metric which measures number of methods that can be executed in response to a message received by a by an object of that class including methods in the class itself and methods in classes it collaborates with say if this rfc value is high it indicates more complex class and may suggest a need for refactoring then lack of cohesion in methods which measures uh, how related and focused the methods of a class are so say in class we have two to three methods so using this metric we can uh, measure whether those methods in a class are related to each other how much they are related to each other say if this lcom value is uh, low it indicates higher cohesion which means that methods work closely together so here always high cohesion is uh, desirable as it suggests that class has well defined responsibility say if there are no methods which access the same attributes 
then LCOM value is considered to be zero. This is not there. Next, operation-oriented metrics. Uh, these are important for evaluating the quality and efficiency of operations or methods within an object-oriented system. First one is average operation size. This metric calculates the average size of operations in terms of lines of code or number of messages sent by the operation. Say, for example, if the number of messages sent by single operation increases, then it clearly shows us that the responsibilities are not well allocated to all the operations within a class. That's why only single, op single operation is uh, sending all the messages. You can derive formula for this average operation size as total lines of code for all the operations divided by total number of operations. Second one is operation complexity, which assesses the complexity of operations often measured using cyclometric complexity or other complexity measures. Next third one is average number of parameters per operation. This metric calculates average number of parameters accepted by operations. So if the number of operation parameters are more, then you can find a more uh, complex collaboration between the objects. High average number of parameters can make methods harder to understand and use. Ideally, methods should have limited number of parameters to enhance clarity and usability. Then we have user interface design metrics, which are essential for evaluating the effectiveness, usability and overall quality of a user interface. These metrics help the designers and developers understand how well the user interface meets user needs and supports a positive user experience. A typical GUI uses layout entities like uh, graphic icons, text, menus, windows, etc. to help the user in completing the tasks. And uh, here are simple characteristics of the element. They can have significant impact on the quality of the GUI design. The number of words, links, graphics, colors in the fonts which are present in the web page, they actually affect the complexity as well as quality of the page. Here we have few important user interface design metrics like usability metrics, user satisfaction metrics, engagement metrics, accessibility metrics, and uh, visual design metrics, which evaluates how effectively visual elements are arranged to guide users' attention, and also measures the contrast between text and background colors.